Hey guys, uh, I'm going to show you uh, real quickly how to do uh, an action, how to create an action in Photoshop that you can apply to an entire folder of your images, of your specimens, um, and then I'm going to show you how to batch automate that. So the first thing we need to do is have all of our photos assembled and named, if you so choose, into a single folder. I've named mine Colex Images Original. Anytime you're working with images and stuff, you want to make a copy. This is actually a copy of my original folder, just in case anything goes haywire. Um, that's kind of the danger of working with a batch automate thing, is if you make a mistake and apply it to your entire folder, you've just made that mistake however many times the images are in your folder. Um, so definitely work with a copy. So once you've got that all sorted, pull one of your images into Photoshop. <coughs> And ultimately what we're going to want to do, um, this image as you can see is quite large for the web. It's 1800 by 1200 at 300 resolution. Um, we ultimately want to make that uh, 200 by 200 at 72 uh, pixels an inch. Um, and so because that's something really basic, we can actually set Photoshop up to do it automatically. So the first thing we're going to do in that... Uh, quest to get them all to do it for us is to open up the actions palette <clears throat> basically like this little recorder that will keep track of all the clicks and changes you make and then um, save it and you can just simply hit the play button and it'll make all of those repeatedly um, so you can see I already set up an action but we're gonna do a new one for this specifically um, so you wanna go down and create new action and we'll call this uh, image resize test and you can collect them or organize them by sets I already have a collect site folder but this just allows you to keep track of things as you guys use these more and more frequently you'll have uh, you know hundreds potentially um, and so this will give you the opportunity to kind of group them by project it's a nice way to keep track of them so we're going to hit record and you can see this little button at the bottom of the palette lights up. And that means any click, any adjustment, anything we do basically is going to be uh, saved for later. So the first one we want to do is get these in the ballpark of what we're trying to do. Again, for the tiles on the front index page of the collect site, you want them to be 200 by 200. So we're going to go image, image size. First thing I'm going to do is change the resampling of the image to bicubic sharper as it's best for reduction. I'm going to change the DPI or PPI rather to 72 and then I'm going to change the shortest of these dimensions to 200. So it's going to give us an image that's 300 wide by 200 tall 72 dpi which is not quite where I want it yet but uh, this is good enough for now so we'll click OK obviously that made it considerably smaller Oops. just zoom in there a bit so the next thing we want to do is crop this um, <coughs> because I've shot all my images so the the image was in the center of this large field um, we can automate that as well if you happen to shoot these so your subject is maybe over here and over here you would have to do this part manually um, but if you consistently shot them then it's really easy to do so what you do is you go up into canvas size and so this isn't messing at all with the pixels per inch or do you think it's simply just cropping the overall canvas area and you can see you can select an origin point for where you want these changes to take place um, if you're enlarging the canvas you can change the background fill color etc etc um, so what we want to do is chop 50 pixels off of each side ultimately we want it to be 200 by 200 and it's going to grab 50 from here and 50 from there if you select one of these it'll grab it all from the right side this will grab it all from the left side, um, but we just want it to equally do it uh, from all sides. So we're going to do that and click OK. 
It'll give us a little warning dialog box that we're going to lose some of our canvas, which is exactly what we wanted it to do, but it warns us anyway. So just click proceed. So we're all set there. Um, that's what we want our image to look like. So what we're going to do is go file, save as. We're going to make a new destination folder and we'll put colex images edited and we'll just click save and then we will close it and you can see all of those actions showed up right there since we're done with that image we want to hit stop we now have a saved action right there. So to show you guys how this worked or works, you can do this individually, um, but we're going to drag another un unedited image into uh, Photoshop. And again, you can see it's a large image. Um, so if we highlight this uh, particular action and then hit play selection. You can see that in just a second or two it made all those changes, saved it and closed it. And there's our saved image from the one we just had. Now, if you go back to Photoshop, you can automate this process even further um, instead of having to drag in each individual image and click the play button every time um, which isn't the most arduous thing compared to how much time we're saving by setting up this action but you can still automate it further it's particularly helpful if you get into the hundreds of images as opposed to our 36 plus so you can go to file automate and click batch and it'll give you the option to select a folder, which uh, we've done. And then the action you want to use, image resize test. Actually, and then the source. Or sorry, my mistake. This is the set of the action you're drawing from the Colex site folder. And this is the action within that folder. This is the folder um, where you select the images. So here's our original images. And then you can choose where you want these to show up. And we can even make a new folder if we so choose. We'll stick with the edited. And then this will give you the option of renaming the saved files as well, which is really handy. Um, so you can choose to do the document name. Obviously, there's quite a few variations. You can customize it. Um, we're just going to go document name and then main sprite as that correlates with the uh, new action, sorry, the new um, area of the web that we're making these for specifically. And then you click OK. And you can see them open, edit, and close. Open, edit, and close. Obviously, this will take a while um, if you have hundreds of images, but because we only have eight or nine, it's not such a big deal. All right, so it's all done. We'll go into here. 
and you can see they've all been resized to our target size and they're ready for use. So you can do this with just about anything. Uh, if you have a consistent rollover treatment, which I imagine many of you would, maybe it's black and white, maybe it's blurred, maybe it's pixelated, um, you know, however you guys play it, you can set up an action uh, to do that to these. Um, or for any really repetitive task in Photoshop, it's super handy. And then Batch Automate just kind of rounds it out and does all the uh, all the minutia for you. Anyway, um, thanks, and let me know as always if you have questions.